going over the basics of stick welding. Subscribe and let's dive right into it. Woo! Stick welders are categorized by polarity. You have AC machines and you have DC machines. And yes, there are expensive AC DC machines, but they are not worth it for stick welding. Now we get AC power from the house. Thank you, Tesla. No, that is not Tesla. This is Tesla. Now the issue with that is it's a higher voltage, lower amperage. And an AC machine takes that, keeps it AC, and it transforms it with, as you guessed it, a transformer. And it turns it into a high amperage, low voltage, which is what you want for welding. Now the issue with that is it's a big honking machine. The transformer is not a light thing. That's where a DC inverter type machine comes into place. DC machines take that house power and invert it into a DC or direct current power. And the components to do that are really small. So that's why you're able to get the same amperage output of a machine this size versus one this size. So why would anyone pick up a Hongen machine like this? If you check your classified ads, guaranteed you'll see one pop up. Another great thing is they do last for a long time. So it could be something you could pass on to your kids. And for the other 99% of you out there that don't care, just pick up an inverter type machine. It will get you through all of your projects. You've got aluminum, stainless steel, hard facing. What to get? Well, forget about all of that stuff because really if you are just starting out stick welding, don't start with aluminum or castings. Just don't. No. Nope. Nope. Don't. And if you were at the store right now needing to know what to pick up, forget all of this and pick up some 6013 or 7018 rods. There are hundreds of rods and I'm going to be going over just the basic steel rods. So as you can imagine, you want the same material as the base material that you're actually welding. Makes sense, right? Most rods out there have a four digit code. Now, yes, most of them have an E in front. That just signifies electrode. The first two digits is typically either a 60 or 70. That is a number in kips of the tensile strength that that rod can hold. Remember, I said kips. That is 60 or 70,000 pounds per square inch that that rod can hold in the tensile direction. That's a lot. And guess what? You're not gonna be able to tell the difference between a 60 or 70 in your garage, so pick up either one and you'll be set. The third digit is the position the rod can weld in. For example, a number one, it's all positions. So you can weld on a flat, a horizontal, vertical, or overhead position. And if you're just starting out, don't bother with the other numbers. Just get a one, you can weld in any position you want, and you'll be good. Now the last digit, that is the composition or what the flux is made out of. The flux is what coats your electrode rod. So as you can see, there's a lot of different colors, a lot of different varieties. This is what actually gets you the biggest difference in your weld itself on how it welds, you know, your amperage that you have to run with. So, you know, I'll put up a chart just to show you what those differences are. I wouldn't get hung up on them. I would just stick with, as I mentioned before, a 6013 or 7018 and you'll be good. And unless you're practicing for the 6G pipe test, don't bother with a 6010 rod. Now hold on a second before you grab that 7018. You also need to choose the diameter of rod you'll be using. I'll put up another chart and that correlates with the diameter of size rod you'd be using with the amperage and the thickness of material you're doing. I always have on hand a 16th of an inch, 332nd, and 8th inch rods. And that gives you a broad range of thickness of materials, and it gets me through all of my projects I have going on in my garage. This is one of the processes that I actually suggest getting an auto darkening the most, because as you're striking an arc, it helps out a lot to be able to see what you're going to strike before you actually do it. It throws out a lot of spatter, pick up some gloves, and then to get that flux or slag off at the end, chipping hammer and wire brush, that's what you need. Get it and you'll be set. If you ended up getting an inverter type machine, you will have uh, DINs connections. These are just, it's the type of connection, it's a quick connection, so that you can switch the polarity of your leads. You'll hear this a lot, is it supposed to be DCEP or DCEN? That would be direct current electropositive or negative. And what that means is, is your electrode gonna be hooked up to the positive terminal or the negative? 
99% of the time when you are stick welding, you will want DCEP, meaning your electro should go to the positive terminal. And your ground clamp should go to the negative terminal. And if you picked up an AC unit, you don't have to deal with that. It's alternating current, so you're already set. Having a bunch of welding videos out there, I get asked a lot, hey, my welder's getting nothing out. The go-to is always check the ground connection. If you have a metal table, you can connect directly to the table anywhere. And if not, you need to connect directly to the workpiece that you are welding. So if you're not getting any spark, check this first. The great thing about stick welding is you only have to deal with one setting and that would be your amperage. Now, of course, the question is what amperage do you even go with? And my starting point is either some charts online, but I've also noticed that every pack of rods I've ever gotten comes with charts and suggested ranges of amperage. So just for example, this box of 6013 uh, 332nd inch rods, this can turn into a tongue twister, the amperage is between 50 and 70 amps. So what I do is I take that as a guide and if I'm doing thinner material, obviously go to the lower end. Thicker, you're gonna hit the higher end. You know, and if I were for just me starting out, this eighth inch coupon, I probably run it at about 60, 65 and start there, see how it welds, and then you can adjust it after that. Now to show you guys a couple of things, I actually turned the machine off so, you know, we're not hot right now. Typically out of good habit, you don't want to stick it in the electro holder until you are ready to strike an arc. Now actually placing the rod in the electro holder is a personal preference. Some people, you know, there are grooves in here to have it angled down. Some people like that. Um, I typically have it out at a 90 or sometimes I like it angled up. You know what? There is a groove in there to have it straight out and whether you like the Harry Potter wand or not, that's all up to you. Unlike other welding processes, you are using up the electrode as you're going along. So something to help that out is obviously have some sample pieces. The best thing is obviously to have the same size weld that you're gonna be doing on your final project. That way you can actually do some dry runs, make sure you can go through the whole motion of the weld before actually striking the arc. Now it's actually time to strike the arc. Here's a couple tips to get you going. What I like doing is actually striking just like a match in the direction that my weld is going to be. And I do it pretty close to where I want my weld to start. Once I get it going, then I actually move back right to where the beginning of the weld is and then go back over my strike. With a full length rod, you'll notice that it does get a little shaky out at the end. It happens to everybody. We're not surgeons here. So something that I like to do is, let's pause for a second, take note of where my second hand is. It is stabilizing the end of that stick and it actually, and I'm actually using it to help strike the arc. Once the rod's used up a little bit, you can move your hand out of the way and have at it. Now time to practice. I would suggest getting a flat plate and just practice striking that arc. Once you get that down, move on to some different shapes and different weld types. You got, you know, some angles that gives you some corner joints, uh, some butt welds, fillet welds, some corners and some groove welds. Perfect practice pieces to get you through any of your projects. I'm MechMaster. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, well, like it, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.